Welcome everyone to the first video in our new gameplay series of Transport Fever 2. So in this series, um, as you guys know, there is a lot of different options available in this game, a lot of different ways of playing the game. So in this gameplay series, we're going to focus on some of the aspects of the game that I really enjoy and how I approach the different periods of time as we work through uh, the different types of transportation that become available to us. So we'll take each video and we'll focus on one or two of those things, uh, different aspects of the game. So here in our first video, of course, we need to get started. So that means generating a map and choosing some of the different options. For our purposes, we'll be going with the temperate map. We'll be going with the minimum amount of healing this just so that we have as much of the map open and available to us for our transportation routes without it being overly expensive to make a whole bunch of tunnels and things like that. Water and Forest will leave right in the center. We'll see what kind of random seed it gives us and, and how that works out on the map. Some additional options we're going to be using is a very large map size. We're going to go with the biggest map that they have in the game because I believe this is going to, along with some of the other options we're going to choose, give us the opportunity to have massive amounts of different routes and different types of transportation available to us. We're also going to go with a medium number of towns. Now, that's not the highest number on towns. I want those spread out a little bit more because I want to make room for more industries. We're going to be going with very high industries. And you can see here on the map, they are absolutely everywhere. That is going to serve to give us a ton of opportunities so that hopefully we can, even in the early game, service many of these cities around the map without having to run into too many roadblocks. So now that we've got that part set up, we'll move on to the next screen. We're going to be playing with the USA uh, vehicles, and simply because I'm in the USA. Uh, starting year is going to be at 1850. Difficulty, we're going to be using the easy difficulty, simply because I want to keep things moving and make sure that we always have as much money as possible in order to do the expansions and the upgrades that we're going to want to do. So that takes care of the options. Now, we will not be using any mods in this particular playthrough, although there are many mods already available through the Steam Workshop. So with all that taken care of, let's head into the game. The first thing I like to do when I'm starting a new game is start off by pausing the time so that time isn't passing while we are uh, attempting to find different opportunities and get them set up. We have $5 million to start the game, which is enough to get a pretty good start early in the game. So what we're going to focus on is go to some of the different cities on the map, look at what goods they're interested in, and just see if there are any very easy and simple setups that we can get started with. So like right here, they're going to want food in Seattle, and I see a factory here that could supply the food, but as I look around, there's really nothing very close. I mean, there's one here, but early in the game with the slow travel speeds, that is a fairly long distance. So it's possible for us to do this. There's also another source of wheat up here, but these are some pretty long distances uh, for early game when we have some very slow horse and buggy type speeds. So we're looking for the easiest opportunities to get us a source of income so that we can start to pay down some of our debt. So if we click on uh, our financial information, you can see that we have $5 million, but all of that balance is from a loan. So we're going to want to start repaying that as soon as possible. That's the finance degree part of me. Uh, when you have a finance degree, you tend to focus a lot on things like debt and wanting to get rid of that as fast as possible. So that's the route I like to go, even though it's not such a huge factor in uh, our cash flow. Then we move over to Costa Mesa and fuel is another favorite of mine because it's a very simple process to do. So as I look around, obviously we have a fuel factory right here. Uh, and before that, we're going to need a way to take crude oil and convert it into oil. So I see that right here. And so I'm, then I'm looking for different places to get the crude oil. I see three spots, actually four spots, right down here. So that is certainly a possibility. Oh, there's another one right here. So we could set up a pretty simple path. I don't think there's going to be any elevation issues there. Uh, we could simply make a path straight from crude oil over to refined oil then bring that down to be converted into fuel, and then finally bring it into Costa Mesa in the city itself and drop that off and get them started. Keep in mind, the cities that we 
work with the quickest are the ones that are going to grow the quickest. So let's go ahead and actually do that. Let's just start. Since we found one that's pretty decent, uh, let's go ahead and use that. So we're going to come in under streets and we're going to go with country roads. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the middle ground. 37 miles per hour is well faster than anything we're going to be able to do early on. Uh, but let's see. Let's go ahead and do... Let's see what we get. Something like that. And it wants to put a little extra curve on it, but that's not a huge deal for us. So we're going to spend some money there. Then after that, uh, we simply want to come in and put some truck stations down. Now, I want to make sure that I give plenty of room for this truck station. In other words, like I could fit it in right here, but it's not going to give me any room for growth. And later on, I'm going to need to expand these uh, to give us more room because generally the raw material in the very first part of the chain of production, you're going to have a huge demand and a huge supply of that from this particular factory. And we want to be able to handle that as much as possible. So what I'm going to do... And let's see, I'm going to try to get this down as far on the road as I can, uh, as long as this is still highlighted. So you notice that I get down into here, it's no longer highlighted, but right here it is. So that's the closest I can get these uh, together, making the shortest route for these guys. So I'm actually going to start here. Now, eventually, we're going to come back and we're going to replace this route with uh, a train. But for right now, early game, I'm going to stick with... The ground transportation, uh, the basic horse and buggy. All right, this isn't too bad. Let's see. Again, move it as far away as I can till it goes away. So about right in here should be pretty good. Okay, so that gives us our first route, and we're going to go ahead and name this one. What is the nearby city? Uh, let's see, Costa Mesa. Okay, that'll give us our name. New line. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this. And I'm going to name this Crude. You'll find that a lot of times the names I use for some of this won't be the official name that the game uses. Uh, it'll be whatever is easiest to trigger in my mind what I'm looking for. So that's our very first route. So now let's look for our second route. Now that's going to be pretty simple. We already have the road network set up for this. So we're going to be taking our crude and we're going to bring it down to our fuel. So come back into our buildings. Okay, so that's too far away. And let's see what happens if I swing this around. That's not going to give us very much room though. All right, so if I spin this around and go... No, nope, still not. And I think most of that is because this this road, the way that comes out and, and winds around, that makes it way longer than it really needs to be. So let's just go ahead and connect these up. That should help us out some. All right, so now there you go. You can see that we have a much better situation. Uh, can I get it over here? Nope, that's not going to allow us to do that. So we'll just come back right here, and that will work out perfectly fine. Move it up a little bit. Again, I want to give room for some expansion because we'll be wanting to span uh, backwards there. Okay, there's going to be route number two. So line manager, new line. And we'll set these up. Now, I really wish the game would show you the icons of what is being created at these different factories, but sometimes I get lost, particularly as I get later into the game when there's a lot more options, a lot more things that I'm doing, and I simply forget uh, what it is I'm trying to set up and where exactly all these different parts and pieces are. But there are ways to work around all the shortcomings that I find. So this one we're going to name oil since this will be more refined oil that we'll be transporting on the second leg of this. And then from here, we'll simply be taking the finished fuel into the city. And we're going to have to go to a certain part of the city because we've got two different goods that the city wants. And the way we find out the area is based on the layout of where commercial and industrial are located. Now, for this purpose, we don't really need a truck station because we're not going to be picking anything up. We're simply going to be dropping off, so we just need an unload stop. 
Again, focusing on the cargo rather than the passenger. And we're dealing with fuel, so that's gonna be pretty simple. We can drop it off anywhere in this area where the industrial area is located. So I think we'll just go somewhere right here. I'm gonna leave some room for uh, passenger stops a little bit later on because you can't put these right next to each other. All right, I like that. Uh, and that will give us the very end of our very first product chain. So let's go ahead and before I forget, set up our new line. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna name this one Fuel. So there we go, it's very simple. Uh, I love fuel early on in the game because it is a very simple process. Go from crude to refined oil, down to the fuel, and then to the city. Not the shortest uh, production chain that you can get, but it is certainly well worth the time and effort to do it. Now we're gonna need a way to purchase the vehicles, and everybody has a little different idea of where they want to put uh, their depots. Uh, I generally try to keep them in and around the cities as much as possible, uh, simply because that's generally where I'm gonna be focusing most of my needs for vehicles. All right, so we're gonna give this one a little bit of distance so we can upgrade the road for a wider road as time goes on. All right, so next thing we need to do, we're already down to 4.2 million, not too bad, a little bit more than I wanted to spend, uh, but a big portion of that went into actually getting up and going with uh, this road network, but that's okay, we'll make that money back. All right, we're gonna come in, we wanna buy some vehicles, and right now we're dealing with cargo, and there's only one option, the horse-drawn carriage. So we can carry a capacity of four, and it can carry all cargo types, so that makes it a lot easier and avoids some headaches for us. So a capacity of four, and it can go 11 miles an hour. Now for the first leg of, of this chain, I'm gonna go, we're gonna start out with 20, and we're probably gonna be able to handle many more than that for the crude oil, but we'll start out with 20. And you can see that's gonna cost us 477,000. Let's go ahead and buy those, and that is an extremely loud sound, even though I could have sworn I turned that down. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this onto the crude route, which you can see in red up here at the top of the screen. Okay, let's go ahead and get time started. And now we're gonna buy some more vehicles, horse-drawn carriages. And we're gonna do, we're gonna start out with, let's say 10. Again, we're probably gonna be able to, to handle many more than that, but we'll let this get up and running before we worry too terribly much about that. Okay, so this one will go on, uh, not fuel, but we want oil. And then finally, we'll need some for our fuel route, and we'll start out with about seven of these. This will likely be our least profitable of the three routes, with crude being the most profitable. That's generally the way things work out for me. All right, so now you can see we've got a ton of vehicles out there, and these will operate at a loss for a short period of time, simply because uh, during that time, it takes a long time to get to and from their destination. So we'll keep an eye out on things like this, the demand. We're, we can see it already coming in. So if I zoom in a little bit on our station, you can see we're already at 110. We don't have room for 110 here. So let's go ahead and expand this some. Not crucial that you expand this because the game gives you plenty of leeway on this. But I'm going to give it plenty of of room here and you can see we've already used all of that room as well but that should be enough for right now and right now there'll be no uh, supply out here because we haven't supplied any crude just yet okay so we won't need to work with that same thing over here at the fuel no reason to worry about expanding that station so right now we have uh, our first 20 vehicles that are going to head over to crude and we've already seen there is plenty of supply for us to pick up and deliver so that'll get us started making a little money and while that is up and running let's actually move over a little bit uh, another one of my favorite items to move i just call them bricks but it's actually construction material because again it is a very simple process to set up and is a pretty easy money maker early in the game Unfortunately, the closest brick maker I see is well over here by Murfreesboro, which is nice because Murfreesboro is a city in Tennessee. 
where I'm located. So always nice to see a familiar town name in the game. All right, so Carlton is kind of out of luck uh, because, yeah, this this is not a good situation for them early on, but I'm sure we'll find some ways to take care of them a little bit later on. So then we move over to Murfreesboro, and immediately I'm able to see that we've got bricks nearby. Uh, so then we need to find the stone or rock. All right, I see some rock right here. But again, early on in the game, that is a very long distance and okay i don't really see any other source of rock so we'll have to leave that one till a little bit later on we have some faster transportation that we can fill that gap uh fontana once again when i see something like these goods right here that is a more involved detailed uh, line of production so i generally stay clear of them early game now the gears which the game calls machines those are not quite as bad, but still uh, have several steps involved. So we're going to leave Fontana alone. So hopefully we're going to find some additional. Okay, so Seattle, we've already seen those. Let's move down a little bit. Oh, there's some more of the bricks. Unfortunately, this time I don't see any brick maker. Yeah, there's one right here. But again, that is a long haul early in the game. What about Naperville? Uh, I see fuel, which is one of my favorites. Unfortunately, don't see anything there. All right, so then we look over to Surprise. What a great name for a town. And I really like the two options here because we've got food and we've got our bricks or construction materials. All right, and immediately I see construction material, or excuse me, I see a brick factory there and I see rock. So this looks like this is going to be a very simple process. You can see our money is going down right now because we are operating at a loss on our initial route. And so let's go ahead and set up this route. This is very nice. These are the ones I love to get early on in the game. And again, a lot of this will be replaced by a train later on, but I love starting out with uh, the horse and buggy. A little different experience. All right, so there's one for the rock. Uh, let's go ahead and put one... About right here again giving it plenty of room to expand on it should we need to a little bit later on and then we'll put down an unload stop here so for our purposes uh, I tell you what let's go ahead and put one let's just put it right here there we go so simple three steps to get us where we need to go so surprise is the name of the town so we'll set up our first routes and so we're going to name this one. I'm just going to call that rock or stone, something like that. That'll let me know what I need to know. And then the very next one. There we go. And so this is going to be surprise. Uh, and I'll call these the bricks to save us a little time since that's what will easily trigger in my mind. And now we need to put down our depot. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and put it out here on the outskirts of town. Somewhere like this. Don't want to interrupt any intersections that might be forming later on. Okay, so now we'll come into here. We got 2.7 million. That should be plenty for our purposes. Again, horse-drawn carriages. And we'll start out with, uh, let's just go ahead with 20. I think 20 should be a good number, uh, a much closer. And wow, I've got to do something about these sounds here in just a second. That is going to drive me nuts. Okay, so we want rock. Very first thing. And let's actually come back out. Uh, let's go to settings, audio, and let's turn this like well down. Okay. Okay. Apply that and resume. So that should help us out, hopefully, to get rid of some of that very loud. All right, we're going to go with 10 on this, this next leg, which, again, we'll have to come back and adjust these as time goes on. So we want uh, the surprise bricks. So that takes care of both of the routes. Now you see all of our vehicles. So this isn't a very uh, long process from here to here as opposed to what we saw 
up a little bit higher on Costa Mesa, a little bit farther, particularly on this second leg of the journey. So we're a little bit closer on each of the legs here. So first thing I'm going to want to do is let's come in here and see what kind of supply we've got going. And so we're at 23 right now. Let's go ahead and expand this because I'm sure that's going to be... All right, we'll go ahead and expand it, add a, a few more in there. So again, you can see the number increasing there. All right, so road trip number two set up. So now let's take a look at this food. Food is a very simple process as well, and I see wheat right here. There is the food, so not too bad. It's going to be pretty lengthy from wheat over here to the, the bread, but uh, other than that, I think that's going to be okay. So let's go ahead. We're down to 1.8 million. Still should not be a big problem. So let's go ahead and work through this. Again, making sure that when we put down uh, our uh, depot here, we want to make sure that we keep this highlighted. Otherwise, it will do us no good to put one down because these factories will only provide to our stations uh, if they are highlighted and connected to these. So always need to keep a track on that. I am really bad about not doing that sometimes, and then I have to sit around and figure out what it is exactly I messed up. Okay, now we need to come back into the city, and this will be a pretty simple one. I'll, again, trying to leave some room for passenger uh, drop-offs and pick up there. So we'll go ahead and put it about right there. That's sort of in the center of the area. Now it's time for some new routes. All right, so we're going to go... So this one will be Surprise Wheat. That's going to easily be my favorite city there, unless there's something else that pops up at me later on. But right now, that is definitely my favorite city name. And then for the second leg of the journey, we're going to go, I need to zoom in here a little bit so I can see it. There we go. Okay, so surprise, and we're just going to call this one food. Okay, we're down to 1.7 million. So as soon as we get done with this, we'll actually uh, zoom back out a little bit and take a look at the very first routes that we've set up. And that'll take care of our very first video. So again, 20 is usually my jumping off point for the raw materials to, very, to start the process. So we want surprise wheat. Because what we really want to do, since we've already seen, you're going to have a lot of supply at the very first part of the chain. We want to make sure that we keep a consistent flow into our factories uh, in steps two or three of the process. So that's the reason why I like to start out with 20. And then we'll come back in uh, and we'll do 10. Here, 238,000. Oh yeah, that sound is much, much better. All right, surprise food, we'll set that up, and there we go. So we've got all of that taken care of, uh, and already you can see down here that we are full. It's got 44 and looking to add more. Let's go ahead and expand our cargo room here. Uh, in addition to allowing more space for cargo, another thing it does that I really like is as we have, particularly as we get 20 and above uh, vehicles that are going to be filing in here, it gives us more room. The deeper this station goes, the more room we get for these guys to line up and turn around without being stuck out in the road and jamming up traffic. And that will be particularly important as time moves on later in the game. But for right now, it's not a huge issue as these guys will start to spread out. But you can see the first leg of the journey is always filled with supply. So now with that in mind, let's come back over to Costa Mesa, which is where we started setting up our very first line for our fuel. So now we'll take a look here and once again we are completely full here and then some. So 240. So that means we have plenty of room to add some more vehicles and you can see they're starting to spread out a little bit more evenly and let's see what that's doing for production here. So we've got only 11 but we've also got a pretty uh, pretty high number of vehicles. Let's see what we've got 
Yeah, not as many here. We've got some gaps here that we need to fill. So I'm going to be coming, coming back and adding some more vehicles. Uh, but for right now, let's go ahead and, and configure this one and add a little bit more cargo room just to make sure we don't lose any uh, production. Again, it also has that added benefit of leaving more room here for uh, additional vehicles. Now let's come down and take a look at our fuel. 14, 13, okay, I like that. And again, we're going to do the same thing here. And this should serve us quite nicely until we get to the point where uh, I really, I don't like to use the initial uh, railroad uh, trains simply because uh, they're a little bit slower and it's fairly expensive uh, early game for me. I prefer to use the vehicles uh, for multiple reasons, but of course cost is always one of those. So at this point, we are just under a million dollars. And I think, let's come back in and let's purchase some additional ones. We're going to start out with just five. Now that's, we could add, I tell you what, let's just go ahead and make it 10. And we're going to go Costa Mesa crude. And then I'm also going to buy some additional ones. We're just going to go five here. And then we're going to set these up on fuel, no, not fuel, I'm sorry, oil. And that should help us out a little bit more in keeping a consistent flow. You can see we're already doing pretty good uh, from points one to two on our crude, but I still want to keep this maximized as best we can. But the real money on this route is going to be made when we finally get around to setting up our railroad because it's going to be a very short distance and we're going to have a huge capacity, somewhere around 100 plus capacity on that railroad. And that is going to enable us to make quite a bit of money. So as we start to wind down today's video, let's come in and actually take a look at where we are. So profitability is something that obviously we want to see this in the blue. We don't want to see it in the red. And already you can see that the surprise routes, which were the last routes we set up, the last city we dealt with, already we are making some nice money there. Costa Mesa Crude, no shocker there, is also making us quite a bit. And I would imagine that this wheat route is also going to make us quite a bit as time goes on as well. So surprise food, not unexpected that it's in the negative right now, but we are going in the right direction because overall we should be making quite a bit of money. So what I'll do now is we'll come back next time and we'll look at sort of the next step in the progression because we've got a lot that we want to do. We want to move into railroads. We want to start chipping away at this debt so that we can really focus on expansion going forward. And of course, I'm going to be looking at some of the other cities here on the map and see if there are some other very simple opportunities that we can take advantage of early in the game. That'll do it for today. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more Transport Fever 2.